Because this chapter was so busy getting back on track from World War II, as far as getting the financial operations going, getting involved in the Michigan campus, their main concern was fraternity. So George's fraternity education was a natural integration into the fraternity. He and his pledge brothers had their own experience. It wasn't one. Well, this positive experience stayed with George throughout the years. And in 1969, as executive director of Lambda Chi Alpha Fraternity, George wrote an article in the Crossing Crescent entitled, Reflections, Pledges, Who Needs Them? In this article, George called for a new program with new terminology that would replace the pledge program that had been in Lambda Chi Alpha since our founding in 1909. This article had been spurred because of two things. One, George's positive experience at the University of Michigan, and two, in the year 1969, 30% of the men pledged by Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity were not initiated. There were some problems there. So this idea was introduced in 1969. For three years it developed. Undergraduates like yourself, Grand High Zeta members, other alumni, people from the Office of Administration worked on this program, developed it. What do we want in it? And then at the 33rd General Assembly in 1972 in Portland, Oregon, fraternity education and associate membership became the official program of Lambda Chi Alpha Fraternity. So we've been going at this thing for 11 years now called fraternity education. And the program has developed from the original experience of George into a program that includes no separations between actives and associates. Two, a continual education process for all members, actives and associates. And three, it's based on the premise that the ritual of Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity is not the end to the orientation of a freshman. It's a continual ongoing experience. So from the initial positive experience of our executive director, George Spazic, and the work of literally hundreds, maybe even thousands of Lambda Chi Alpha men, this program called Fraternity Education has developed. And as I said, we've been going at it 11 years. And when I say 11 years, I'd like for you guys to stand up. On your feet, come on, let's go. Everybody, Grand House 8 2, you poobahs aren't exempt. Okay, what I want you to do is give yourself a pat on the back. Now I'm gonna pat old Scott Sparks here. Okay, give yourself a good one, guys. Okay, it's time, yeah, here we go. Okay, well, right shoulder, left shoulder, okay. Okay, I'll tell you what that pat on the back's for. That's a congratulatory note for myself and all of Lambda Chi Alpha for your efforts in making fraternity education work. Guys, without you, there's no way we would have made it. You may be seated. Because you see, fraternity education's only been going for 11 years, and we've had to overcome some adversity. Number one, campus pressure. Hey, it's tough when all the fraternities on your campus have pledges and hays. How many of you guys have been called the milk and cookie boys before? Huh? You're not a real fraternity. You don't haze and you don't have pledges, right? That's tough. How about a second adverse condition? Alumni acceptance of fraternity education. It's tough to accept fraternity education and associate membership back when you were a pledge in 1951 and cleaned toilets and went through Hell Week. That's tough. But the third thing and probably the most difficult has been the acceptance of it by the undergraduates to replace a traditional program. Fraternity education doesn't fit in, Tom. Pledgeship, hazing is the way to go. That's part of fraternity. But we've made it, my brothers. We've turned the corner and the only way to go is up. But one of my favorite sayings is, if you've become content with what you're doing, you've already become complacent. Let's not become complacent complacent. We've got to continue to improve. Because of the efforts of Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity, other fraternities have started fraternity education programs. They have associate members or positive pledge education programs. We're not going to be the only fraternity this fall that can come up to that guy and say, hi Joe, damn glad to meet you. Come on into Lambda Chi Alpha. Hey, we have associate members and we don't haze. Other fraternities have this now, guys. It's not our ace in the hole anymore. So, we've got to improve. We've got to move on. And when I talk about improvement, first of all, we have to gauge where we're at. And I've devised a chart here that I call the fraternity progress chart. 
where you as individuals and chapter members can rate where your fraternity education program is. And there are five areas I'll go over with on you for this. The first one's pledgeship. We began with this in 1909. Some of you guys still might have pledgeship in your chapter. The terminology is used. There are pledges. There are separations between the pledges and the actives. And there's some severe hazing activities that go on, potentially dangerous. The second area is pledge education. Hey, you still call them pledges, but there's some educational benefits that go on. But it's mostly just trivial memorization, the traditional program that's been handed down through the years. The third area, associate member education. The newly recruited men are called associate members, but their weekly fraternity education meetings basically only attended by the associate members. It's for associate members only. The fourth area, associate member education and big brother. This is a little bit of an abbreviation. You have associate member education, but the big brothers attend the fraternity education meetings also. You have a big brother coordinator who works that program to solidify your fraternity education program also. And the fifth step, fraternity education, utopia, where you've got year-round programming. The actives and the associates come to fraternity education meetings and it's a developmental program. So take a look at this. Where does your chapter stack up on this sheet right here? Where are you at on the fraternity progress chart? There's always room to improve, no matter how good you are or no matter how good you think you are. Your goal should be, with a fraternity education program, to develop all members, actives and associates, in the areas of leadership, scholarship, the social graces, organizational skills, communication skills, etc. And all members refers to actives and associates. You can have the greatest associate member education program in the world, but all you're basically doing is making the AMs model Lambda Chi's for a semester, a quarter, or whatever length of time associate membership is at your college or university. And please don't make the fraternity education program a lengthened Lambda Chi Alpha history course. Hey, if the AMs know their Greek alphabet, if they know what happened in 1909, or who John Mason is, or Sam Dyer, or Lewis Robbins, that doesn't mean they know how to recruit men, or where their money goes, or how to run a chapter meeting, or how to get involved within the chapter. Your fraternity education program must be developmental. And let's see how a developmental fraternity education program affects the incoming freshmen in 1983-84 and in years to come. Took a look at some surveys and some statistics, and I came up with this information. In 1983-84, as was mentioned last night, if a freshman goes to a public institution, he's paying 7% more than he did last year. If he goes to a private institution, he's paying 11% more. Because he's paying more, the chances are greater he's going to be either working part-time or have substantial loans or grants. The curriculum he's going to go into is probably going to be more technical than liberal arts as it has been before. And a fourth thing is, he's going to be a more of a non-traditional student. He's probably going to be older, probably a first-generation college student. So we're looking at more of a non-traditional student background coming into the colleges and universities in years to come. That means there's going to be more of a non-traditional student coming in to recruitment that comes to our rush parties. And this guy is going to want to get his money's worth if he's going to join a fraternity. If he's going to take the time and make the financial commitment to join Lambda Chi Alpha, it's going to have to benefit him. Gone are the days where men will put up with anything just to get in the fraternity. So what does this tell you? Again, your fraternity education program must be developmental in nature. And there's answer number one that I'll give you to your recruitment problems. Hey, what a better recruitment advantage to come into this guy when he comes down to rush and say, hey, Lambda Chi Alpha has a fraternity education program complete with associate membership. You will come in at our fraternity as an equal. You have the opportunity to serve on committees. You will come to chapter meetings. If the other chapters on your campus have pledges and haze, what a better recruitment advantage. A second answer to your recruitment problems might be if you have a recruitment workshop led by the high delta or an alumnus or maybe even a chapter consultant to teach your members the skills and techniques behind membership recruitment. That might be one of the answers to your recruitment problems. And along the lines of recruitment, 
I feel, guys, in the next decade, if all fraternities, Lambda Chi Alpha, and all fraternities in the, in the interfraternal world cannot offer a positive orientation program to freshman members that come in, they will cease to exist. Answer number two I've got for you, the collection of accounts receivable. How can fraternity education answer that? Okay, let's take a look at this. Suppose the HATA and the executive committee and all the chapter members would have gone to a yearly fraternity education seminar on the Constitution and Statutory Code and had learned what the clauses are regarding financial delinquency, financial suspension. You think they would have been a little bit more prepared and, know, and knew what they should have done in certain situations. And all of a sudden, all the members know what's supposed to go on, not just these five guys on except. Or if all the members, and not just the JAs or the JIs for junior actives or junior initiates, had gone to that Zeta Alpha Chi session following the ritual and had read and remembered what they had said in this book. I will for the rest of my life. This right here could be one of the answers to your collecting of financial problems within your chapter. A third, a third answer to that might be, suppose you guys would have started a, a good alumni affairs program and had cultivated it with a good Founders Day or a homecoming dinner or an alumni versus the active softball game. You think the alumni would be a little bit more receptive to coming over to the house if everything got out of control and the executive committee couldn't enforce the laws of the fraternity? You bet they would, guys. Again, I give you the answers. All of the above activities are fraternity education activities. And I could continue on and answer any problem you guys have by using fraternity education activities. If you return to your chapter this fall and sit down with the executive committee or the high Zeta or the house corporation or the whole chapter and map out your problems and then develop fraternity education workshops, discussions and seminars to attack these problems, I guarantee you'll either solve your problems or you'll be on the way to solving them. And along the lines, again, of solving these problems, within the Standards of Chapter Excellence workbook are the Standards for Excellence in Fraternity Education. And I'd like to briefly go over these with you. Total concept. The total concept implemented of fraternity education as outlined by the policies, procedures and programs of Lambda Chi Alpha. The next four I will go over are development areas. These four areas make up the program we know as fraternity education. They're areas that you draw ideas from for seminars, discussions, and workshops. Chapter development, to increase the awareness among all the members as to what makes Lambda Chi Alpha tick at your chapter or university. About the executive committee, the recruitment situation, the committee structure. Member development, learning the role of the member within Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity. We've taken some big obligations when we went through this little thing we call ritual, abiding by these. What are my obligations as a member within Lambda Chi Alpha? Personal development, making yourself a better person in a non-fraternal sense. Again, you must benefit from being in Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity. You can know everything in the world there is to know about fraternity. When you get out there in the great world, that might not help you. Self-betterment, the personal development, interpersonal development, getting those relationships together, not just with the sorority women either, but with members in your own chapter. Something good's got to be going on for 80 guys or at Florida State for 189 men to live together in the same roof or in the same fraternity and get along with each other and expanding those relationships. How do we get along with the administration? How do we get along with our alumni? Terminology. Consistency throughout Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity. We are one fraternity, not 220. Associate members and fraternity education is the program of Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity. No separations. No difference between the active and the associate, except that he hasn't been initiated. Why do you ask a guy to join the fraternity? To be initiated, right? Why do we give a guy a bid? Because you want him to be your brother. And we should do everything we can to get this guy into the chapter.
The others I have here, total integration, doing everything we can to get that man into the chapter as quickly as possible, getting him involved in the committee system, getting him on our intramural team, getting him down to the chapter house as much as possible, getting him at the chapter meetings. Anti-hazing. Lambda Chi Alpha has come out with an anti-hazing policy that was approved by undergraduates, that was written by undergraduates, supporting the anti-hazing laws of our fraternity. Again, we have been pioneers against hazing. Pre-initiation, having a positive experience leading up to the ritual that brings actives and associates together, not just for actives or associates only. And going hand in hand with that, post-initiation, following the ritual. Let's don't make it where we just use this book and, you know, <laughs> dust it off and a page falls out in an old dead spot or, you know, and the only thing you do is you bring it out twice a year, you memorize your parts and you lock it away. Your ritual book should be worn out from thumbing through them, from learning about the ritual. The Big Brother program. Making the Big Brother program more than just, you know, well, I'd like to have a big brother. Making it an honor to be a big brother and an obligation and privilege. That's probably the most important relationship that associate member has when he comes into the chapter. When I associated in 1978 at Appalachian State University, if it hadn't been for my big brother, I wouldn't have been initiated, and I sure wouldn't be here tonight. I'm sure some of you wish I wasn't here tonight either. But, again, the big brother program is the key. He's the key. And the final one, year-round programming. Continual programming, year-round, not just for that little period of time where we have associate members, affecting actives and associates. If you take a look at the criteria, guys, ask yourself this question. How many of these does your fraternity education program fulfill? All of them? Five maybe? Ten? How many? I don't know. If you can go back to your chapter this fall and take a serious look at your program, you can improve it. But you've got to take pride in your fraternity education program. And when I say pride, I mean the same kind of pride you guys have when you go out on the intramural field to play flag football. The pride that you take when you recruit the most men on campus, when your house is looking sharp, when you win a Grand High Alpha Award, that kind of pride. And along with pride, again I'll say, fraternity education is the answer. You can use it to solve all of your chapter's problems. I'd like to use a quote from Dr. John Mason, if I will, which I think reiterates the points that I've made. Dr. Mason said, what should be the highest aim of a college fraternity? The answer, I think, is to have men of sterling character who are efficient workers along all the lines of human activity. Not students merely, not animals merely, but men with all around sympathies who can deliver the goods in whatever activity they take up. The people we do take for brothers, we want to encourage along these lines if we can. Delivering the goods is what fraternity education will allow you to do. It is the answer. And I'll add a quote here that I feel is very appropriate. I have learned one great truth in my work with Lambda Chi Alpha Fraternity. The answer to the problems of our chapters, the answer to the problems of our brothers, comes to a single word. That word is education. Education, fraternity education, is the answer to your chapter's problems. Lambda Chi Alpha is approaching its 75th year as a fraternity, and we can look back with much pride on the progress and the things we've done, especially in fraternity education. Let's continue that tradition of chapter excellence, especially in fraternity education. Thank you very much for your time.